today. You're clearly all as excited as me to have Chef Dominique Crenn at Google. She is the chef and owner of Atelier Crenn and Petite Crenn, both in the city. Also holds the uh, prestigious honor of being the first female chef in the U.S. to receive two Michelin stars. Her newest and I think first cookbook, Metamorphosis of Taste, is out today. You're going to have the uh, privilege of accessing that probably in the back of the room in a little bit. So please join me in welcoming Chef Crenn to Google. Thank you for having me. Um, who cooks at home here? I don't. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys cooking at home? What, what, what are you looking for when you're like buying um, um, a cookbook? A lot of pictures. Great, because that's, there is a lot of pictures on this. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, the idea of um, I, didn't write, I didn't want to write a cookbook. I just wanted to write a book, but um, we, you have to, you know, you have to make a deal. So, um, so <laughs> anyway, so this this book is not about for you guys to follow the recipe. It's for you guys to be inspired uh, with narrative and uh, about my life and about the, th the way that I'm thinking about things. Um, my philosophy is about any anything you do in life, you have to think before to do. Something. So, I do always always thinking before cooking, and. Um, um, cooking is um, a vehicle for me to express myself. It's not just, um, I'm not just opening a restaurant to open a restaurant. I think it's kind of boring to, to do this. Atelier Crane was um, a place, um, I was, it's a very special place. In 2009, I um, had a, a major accident where I almost lost my life. And then I woke up, and obviously I did woke up because I'm here today. <laughs> uh, but I realized that uh, life is too short, and um, I wanted to do something that um, uh, embraces the way that I'm looking at life, the way that I'm looking at people. So I wanted to create um, a place where um, I could gather a lot of talents around me and, and to bring a vision and a philosophy up to life. Um, it was not about an idea about I'm a chef, I'm going to open a restaurant because I have a lot of egos. That was not, you know, the idea, which I, I think a lot of people do, but I'm not. Um, no, it was really a place where to bring uh, people together to, to be able to, for them to have a platform to express themselves and obviously to have um, in the same idea uh, that I have and, and to just, you know, to have fun and maybe f with that um, with, with, with that restaurant, we can start to have a dialogue with people in the city and in the world about everything. Um, cooking and food for me is the core of a society, it means that everything that uh, comes from food, also there is economic, there is social economic, there is way of thinking, uh, there is humanity, there is a lot of things. So I know I'm, not, I'm, I'm thinking like I'm not too cerebral, but I'm a little bit cerebral. So. Um, um, so this is this is how we think, and it's also you know um, at Atelier Crane we want to have a lot of fun. We wake up in the morning, we walk 18 hours a day, and uh, we drink a lot of wine at night, and we just laugh. And it's not a regular kitchen where um, the chef is yelling at other. It's a it's a kitchen where there is a lot. I mean here I'm sure there is a lot of talented people that you guys exchange ideas every day. And I think we do the same thing, and I think it's great. So I don't know what we're going to do today. I have th 35 minutes to go. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so um, every dishes uh, that we do um, at Atelier Crane is not, uh, you're not going to find them anywhere else in the world. Um, it's no dishes is an inspiration of any books or any cook you know, recipe that you see online. It's, um, it's a reflection of the way that we think, the way that we feel, and uh, maybe memories that happen also um, uh, through our life. I mean, obviously, I grew up in France. Uh, some of my cook uh, grew up somewhere else. So I always like to integrate a little bit of their DNA into my cooking, which I think is very important. Um, who's, been in, who's been to France before? 
Ah, I love that. <laughs> Uh, did you go to France and eat hamburger, or did you go to France and uh, eat French food? <laughs> I don't know. I just like it's uh, it's interesting. So, uh, do you guys know that um, um, there is a tradition in France where, especially uh, at the table, um, it's it's totally different than here in America. In America, I mean, when you uh, start a meal, I think people start with salads, right? I never understood that. In France, the salad is at the end of the meal to kind of um, uh, bring lightness and to help you to digest. So um, we have a salad. We finish the meal with a salad at Atelier Crane uh, before uh, starting with the dessert, which is about seven, seven dessert after that. Um, who's been to Atelier Crane? Oh, OK. When? I know, I know I get a lot of Google people, but um, what was that? Did you like it? Yeah, there last time. Great. Anybody complain? Any complain? No, okay. Great. <laughs> so, so the way that we think about things is how can we do a salad without uh, being a boring salad with just lettuce and uh, vinegar? So uh, we, take, um, we take ideas. And so what is a salad? A salad is, is composed. Uh, with um, a lot of different greens and baby vegetable. So this is pretty big. Usually it's like really tiny. And uh, we grow, uh, we have a garden where we take all the baby vegetable and salad. And, and so what is in a salad? There is, there is a vinaigrette, you know. I don't know, it could be ranch vinaigrette, which is not French, so we don't do that. <laughs> um, um, usually the, the, the regular, the classical vinaigrette in France is, you know, just uh, banyul vinegar with a little bit of olive oil and sometimes a little bit of touch of mustard, which uh, you, we're not going to have today. So um, I wanted to bring uh, in one bite uh, the feeling and the emotion of, of eating a salad, and which is, you know, a touch of earthiness from um, uh, the... the, the um, the lettuce, um, obviously a touch of acidity with uh, the vinegar and um, a touch of uh, the sweetness because I feel that uh, when you eat something, you, you need to have all the texture of life, which is sweetness, um, uh, acidity, and uh, earthiness. And there is more than that also. There is love and whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, so... This dish, you can't make it in 31 minutes. <laughs> uh, this, there is a lot of process. It takes us about uh, up to 24 hours to make it. Um, so there is two ways we can do. We can, I can walk through. Maybe I, I just walk them through it. Um, all right. So first, um, the idea was to make a meringue. Um, and you're like, what? A meringue? This is not good. Um, <laughs> So the meringue for us was to create a, v a vessel to all the salad. So uh, this is how we're making the meringue. Um, it's, make with, it's made with a lot of interesting things. Um, it's made with uh, banyul vinegar, sugar, uh, different type of hydrocolloid. Um, uh, there is also uh, glucose and um, uh, egg white and all that thing. So you gotta hand, you know, bring them together. The reason we use some hydrocolloid is to stabilize uh, the meringue and the Zantan gum and all that. And we dehydrate the meringue for up to five hours. And um, so this meringue is not really sweet. It tastes like banyol. So that is my best for the vinegar. Uh, banyol vinegar. So uh, what we do with it, we just make a little boat. Um, my cook loves me because it takes them about two hours to make about um, those meringue. And if the meringue, if the if the base is not right, then um, the meringue will not dehydrate it uh, properly. And then when you have 50 people at night, and if it's not ready, and if I don't serve that uh, for my customer, then the chef get very angry, so um, <laughs> so like, it's very intense. So this is this is the best. It's a it's a meringue uh, banyol. Then we uh, make a banyol gel. Um, you can you can do this at home. It's pretty easy. I mean, you can uh, you, you use any type of vinegar. Uh, you can use agar agar, which is very simple. Uh, make sure you hydrate the agar agar, and then. Um, 
and then you just kind of broke, broke the gel. Um, agar agar is fine um, anywhere. You can find it um, any store. I wanted to have also the, you know, um, life is about also feeling. So th this is a feeling of like you can eat also the, the vinegar. I will make everybody test individually this. And then um, we made um, also an olive oil gel. And this is made with uh, eggs. Uh, yolk and olive oil. Uh, we um, we vacuum. Um, basically, we mix the egg yolk. We vacuum it, and then we add a little bit of, of water to stabilize it, and then add the olive oil, and then we make a we make a gel out of it. So, this is like really the component of oil and vinegar vinaigrette. It's very easy, and this is a, this is a vessel. So, um, so the way we do this in um, do you guys want to test the gel first before I um, just go a little bit all around and then just put a little bit on your uh, <laughs> on your finger? Please uh, make sure you don't put too much so you can share with everyone. And then this is uh, the olive oil, so people can test it. So you can get so banyul vinegar is a French vinegar. You can get it. F I think um, I will. I will think old food, old, f old food as it. Um, which is surprising, but I think they do. Um, I think maybe Rambo also has it. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't know if you can find it at. I don't. I don't shop at Safeway or those. Those. I don't. So I'm sorry, but um, uh, I don't like big corporation. I mean, mall food is also bad. I mean, oh no. I mean, this is a big corporation. But this, is, this is not what I'm. This is not what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> Did you guys test the vinegar? Where's the vinegar? The vinegar is here. Oh, okay. Just did, did you give that to them over there? Oh, yeah. You, did you test it? No. I think I think it's important when you you know I think when you cook if you want to cook at home and a little bit more um, um, uh, add there just that's what I that's why I, I also wrote the book you know it's 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 all about inspiration it's like and then if you have like little technique that to integrate in your um, dinner with friend, I think it's fun, you know. Those, um, those meringue, you can make those, obviously, I don't know if you can find those hydrocolloy um, um, at the store, you see you're gonna have to um, order them online. You can, f you can make regular meringue. Uh, the reason why we use those hydrocolloy because we use uh, vinegar, which is acidic. And you can make just regular meringue, put them in the oven, or you can dehydrate it overnight. Just have a lot of fun with it and just make whatever vinaigrette or gel that you want, you know. I think it's all about, you know, bringing um, new fun things to do. So this is, do you guys test everything? Do you guys uh, test uh, olive oil? Oh, it takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have any other question? And is it the poem first? Or is it okay, so I started to write poetry in, uh, when I was four years old. And um, that's how I express myself about life. And then... I never believed to write a menu because I, I think it's boring to find it, to look at the ingredient. I don't know. Um, so I started to write poetry before writing, before doing the. Um, it was kind of a feeling of of what I felt for the season, and then the dishes came after. But now it's very, it's it's uh, it's it's very uh, it's like very fifty fifty. Um, I wrote a menu in uh, in the spring of uh, two thousand twelve. Uh, before to do to do anything else, I was taking care of a little girl uh, that had leukemia, and she passed away in uh, right before springtime. And the menu was the poem was all about her, and all the dishes uh, just follow up after that. So it's um, it used to be before. Now it's just it's just now. It's just like I can write you a poem right now if you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean it's a. Uh, it's kind of like we want, you know, a poem, you can follow the dish. I mean, usually every dish is as, as a line, but it's also uh, we want people to just <coughs> come there and just have fun and, 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 and enjoy the food. And the poem, can, you can read it before or after. Or, but it's just a way of, like, interacting with you guys. So um, you've never been to Atelier? Oh, we go, we go for our oh, my customer right here. <laughs> Um, what was the last time you were there? Uh, February 11th this year. Oh, so February 11th. Uh, February 11th. Oh, okay. Oh, the menu totally different right now. 
Uh, where's my uh, olive oil? Uh... Oh, you like it. You want to keep it. Huh? <laughs> uh, do you guys try the banyul? Yeah. Is it is it is it good? Yes, it's very good. Yeah. Who tried it? Who didn't try it? The the boomerang? Everybody? Oh, you're sharing. That's so nice of you. <laughs> All right, so this is what we do. Um, um, so we take the meringue, uh, we make like a little board, like a little bit, um, a hole, and then we just put um, the banyul gel on top, mix it with a um, little bit of olive oil gel. And then from the garden, um, which is yours, um, <laughs> which is yours, <laughs> Um, then we try to, um, you had the salad, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mini time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. I love that. Um, and then we just, you know, uh, add whatever is in season. And I think what's important for us, we have, a, like I said, we have a little garden upstairs that we, and outside also where we grow a, a little green, microgreens and flower. And uh, when you make a salad, what's interesting is don't take just one type of lettuce. I think you need to mix it. Some need to be bitter, some need to be more crunchy, and, and that's, that's what's going to make a beautiful salad. So um, if you just want to eat a Roman salad, I, um, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then... Um, Making a salad at Google. <laughs> um, okay, so I think that's it. What do we have? Oh, we have a little kale here. Uh, there you go. And um, voilà. so this is how we serve it. Um, you see, it comes on a wood, whatever vessel we have. And then what we ask uh, the customer is to take this and to to eat it once, and then one bite, and then. Uh, I think what you experience is really, you know, the feeling of the emotion of eating a salad without, you know, just in one bite. I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's right at the end. Oh, it's at the end. Yeah. Oh, see, <laughs> she's been there. <laughs> no, at the beginning of the menu, it's a uh, Kir Breton. Oh, it's the white chocolate. Yes. Yeah, to open up your. Uh, uh, exploding in your mouth. So, um, okay, guys. How are how are the dishes developed? Uh, it, it, like um, at, at Atelier Kren, are, is it like a collaborative effort with your various chefs, or or is it um, more driven by you? Or so. Yeah. Well, I think at the, at the beginning of Atelier Kren was definitely more driven by me, and like I, you know, I think when you create a team, uh, there is a lot of uh, different. Um, personality, I would say. And um, I think you need to come together as a team. And now it's, it's really a collaboration uh, with my vision. Uh, so um, some dishes can take four months to develop. Uh, for example, we had, um, I would say my pastry chef um, is about uh, probably four, sometimes five months uh, in pastry. What we do, we uh, take an idea and then we create our own vessel. So we had someone to, uh, um, I need a tissue because I think my, 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 my nose is running and I don't think it's, uh, <laughs> it's sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> No, see, kidding. Um, so, like, um, like we try to do. I mean, you see, there is a lot of different vessel that we. Uh, so we ask people. We we like to involve other artists to make the vessel or plates. Like for example, we had. Um, um, I don't know if you guys know everything, anything about bees in California and the politic, the political aspect of it. And we need to save a bees. I think it's very important. So we created a, a desert to bring a, awareness of that, and it's called Honey. I don't know if you guys... Yes, so I just remembered we were there in February and in May, and the honey, it was a dripping honeycomb yeah, that was that's standing. It. Yeah. And then you got the honey cake, and, and, and it was very interesting because so we've been working with uh, some honey keeper back in Sonoma, and um, 
when we start to cook the honey in the kitchen in San Francisco, then suddenly there's like bees coming into, the, it was crazy, it was coming into the kitchen. So, uh, so dessert can take up to um, four or five months. We have a dessert right now, I don't think you have it. It's called the forest. It's a celebration of, of uh, the forest and uh, it's a reproduction of walking in the forest, which was a, a dish that we created uh, back in 2011 on the Savoy dish, uh, side and now it's like sweet. And uh, we had to have someone to make uh, the vessel for it, so it took about three months. Uh, some other dishes can take, I don't know, um, two minutes, no, I'm kidding. Uh, that's that's a joke. Uh, no, it's, it's it's everything is very thoughtful. You know, I think we don't want to throw dishes that don't mean anything. So, um, I think often um, when we think about season, is it's not just about the food. It's about um, the idea and the feeling and and the emotion around it. You know, I think we live in a world right now that is. Um, I think it's it's the world is in trouble. I'm sorry, I'm going to be very political right now and uh, climate change and all that. So um, everything that I think the next menu is going to be very focused on bringing those awareness uh, through our own dishes. So it's just, it takes a little bit of time. And um, I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm very lucky to have this incredible team that uh, has been working with me. I mean, uh, we are a very small team and they work a long hours, but I just love the way they think and it's very inspiring for me, so. So, I don't want to hog the mic too much. Um, one That's of my okay. one of a one of my favorite dishes. The vessel was a a glass box with the leaves inside of it with the bark. It was probably like two or three years ago. Uh, and it had the the bubbler with the tea with the squash. Oh yeah, yes. And it it was like to represent fall. Yeah, it was. How do you decide? It was summertime. No, I'm kidding. It was fall. <laughs> <laughs> like this quiz. How do you even determine like the thought into the art? So it's like, you know, you, the, the bubbler, like how, that is the tea, right? And then the tree that came out of the glass box, like all of that was so thoughtful, right? So like that was a vessel that I loved, but like how did, I guess, maybe it's your magic, right? Like transforming the thought and the food into the presentation. Well, I, I don't know if it's magic, but I think it's about um, being conscious about your surrounding. And I, and I think for us, when you do something, you have to celebrate where those things come from, you know. For me, nature is number one. Uh, nature and art and food is, is another thing, but like everything. So if you do a dish, is, is where that, that those ingredients come from and what, what is the surrounding and what it means. You know, we have also um, eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is a plant, obviously, that comes from Australia and that, that was um, given to San Francisco a long time ago and there was like a, a eucalyptus uh, trees all over. So um, it's also to celebrate our surroundings. So we need to integrate uh, those uh, to be a part of the story. Otherwise, is I don't know. Otherwise, uh, we're just another, you know, I'm, I'm just another chef cooking food. It's kind of boring, I think, but whatever. So, but yeah, there is a lot of thought, and and once again is you know being lucky to work with, uh, like my pastry chef. Uh, we've been working together since 2006, and it's been a journey, and it's we continuing to make sure that uh, everything we 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 do as is is conscious and thoughtful. So being thoughtful is very much the core of who we are. I know you have been such an advocate for farmers, um, mm. which is so amazing. Could you talk a little bit about maybe one or two of your relationships that you have and kind of how that how that works? Like if, if it's a back and forth relationship or um, it sounded like with that the one in the honey one in Sonoma, like maybe you give you offer ideas perhaps about what it is you want and they provide it or is it a, is it a dialogue? It is a dialogue. Um, so both, uh, for, for some background, so both of my parents uh, come from farmers. So I grew up kind of in that uh, uh, and, and, and they're just amazing people. And, and I always say, you know, farmers are the rock star, not the chef. Um, it's very important to say that because it's true. No, I think with the farmer, I, we do have a dialogue with them, but I feel that they know things better than I know. So they gave us, I always tell them to give us whatever they have for us to be able to uh, create, you know. Um, I don't want to tell them what to do, 
they don't, they don't tell me what to do, so I don't want to tell them what to do. And, I, and there's a lot of chefs that will go to a farmer and say, well, you got to do this and this. When, you know, I think when you uh, understand um, uh, the makeup of a farm, there is, there, is, there is things that you might not be able to grow. And if you have pressure to grow those things, I don't think that works. So um, we have a farm in Sonoma, then I work with a lot of different farmers that have like special things that they grow. And, and I just, you know, I just let them do whatever they want, you know, so. And I really love them. I think they're amazing. They're really cool people. Very humble too. We need them. So make sure next time when you buy food, make sure you buy from a farmer. So I had a similar question about when you decide where to source things from. Like, are you looking at ethical farming practices? Like, what thought goes into your decision when you decide to source an ingredient oh, yeah. from somebody? Yes. Um, I think, um, you know, I, I think I said before, um, not, not, not just for me, but I said before that uh, we all need to. We all need to be advocate to uh, with the way that we we, we do. And then I think um, when you go eat somewhere, it's an action. So I like to know where my food comes from. I like to know the practice of it. Um, I understand some people will argue that organic food is very expensive, but um, it's also you know you have farmers that do. A sustainable practice without having organic um, uh, uh, practice. So, um, yeah, everything that we do and everything that we have actually is, I mean, even, even the employee meal is like all organic and it's from farmers and, and local. And um, as far as my cheese, I don't know, I don't, uh, I like French cheese, so I buy my <laughs> cheese uh, from France. So, but no, uh, even, you know, even any producer, we, we talk to them, we know all the story, we know everything behind it, and I think that this is very important. And that's, that's, I think, that's what the future is going to be. The future is not going to be about industrial farming. The future is going to be about small farming, but we need to support them. I think it's very important. And I know it's very expensive to go to the farmer market. The ferry building is just, I don't know, I live in San Francisco. And, but I don't know, I think we need to find a system, you know, to uh, make sure that if we want to support them and they, they, they need to be, you know, um, uh, in, in sync with, with us, is maybe the price need, and maybe the government need to be involved. <laughs> Which is another story. Um, um, my question for you is, is there an ingredient that when you see, you're just like, this is my favorite ingredient to cook with, or you love it because it's a challenge, or you just, it just like makes your day, and, and vice versa? Is there an ingredient, ingredient that you just are like, ugh, this ingredient I just don't like working with? Um, okay. Um, red pepper, yeah, like green pepper. I dislike those ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's my. I don't. I, I just don't. No, I think every ingredient is is um, is beautiful. You know, um, I like ingredients that are not um, luxurious. I like ingredients that are just on the dog. You know, so. But no, I don't like to. I don't like red pepper or, or yellow or green. Um, it really. It, it has puzzled me when I see, you know, when I ask chefs sometimes when they put that on the plate, and I say, oh, this is for color. Um, I just say, no, I don't like that. So that's the ingredient I like. I'm, it doesn't mean that I'm right, but, um, but um, my favorite ingredient is tomato. So tomato, yes, I, I love tomato. Tomato is, could be a vegetable or could be a fruit, so uh, I love tomato. It has a lot of umami, and it's just delicious, the texture of it, so. Hi. So we talked about ingredients, and uh, that's kind of micro level. And on a macro level, you combine different dishes in a certain way. And it's, it sounds groundbreaking, because you start with white chocolate, then a main dish, then a salad. And can you talk more, a little bit more about how you combine different? Well, I think, you know, um, I, think, I, think, I think people need to think outside of the box sometime. Um, I think we are in a society when there is one way and not the other way. And, um, 
It's like, you know, if you just had a baby, you go to a store, then this is girl uh, clothing and boys clothing. I, I think this need to, I think everything needs to be unisex. Anyway, that's, uh, that's how I think about food, you know, is um, it's not just chocolate, just to need, need to be, you know, in dessert, because when you think about cocoa, what is cocoa? What is cocoa nibs? You know, it's pretty bitter. So um, I like to mix sweetness and, and, and bitterness, and I think that's... Uh, uh, that that's that's interesting. It's the same thing when we you know we pair our food with wine. You know, it's not like oh you can have red wine with 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 seafood. I say yes you can. <laughs> um, so it's it's for us it's just finding the balance. We also understand the molecular profile of, of every ingredient, and which is quite interesting. You know. Um, you can mix cauliflower with blue cheese, it's delicious. Cauliflower and chocolate is delicious also. So because they have a very uh, similar uh, molecular profile, so they go very well together. So it's also understanding, you know, and, and some people will not because it's all about education. So, um, and some things don't work, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I mean, the first uh, dish is, uh, it's a frozen explosion of uh, apple cider that is, uh, uh, served with a uh, uh, reduction of uh, creme de cassis and uh, uh, cocoa butter. And it's, I don't think it's sweet, it's sweet but it's just, you know. Um, uh, my question is around inspiration and where you kind of look for a way to recharge and renew your thinking. Because I think um, whenever I look around other like areas of creative like creation, I think there's always ways and methods people kind of go back to the the well and kind of draw back and see new things and new experience to help create new stuff so i guess my question for you is what are those areas for you where you kind of go back to the well and see and recharge a new renew whether it be like a new season or a new menu that needs to come up and i guess along those lines are there other chefs or other folks in the food arena that are doing interesting things right now that you think are cool well i mean um my personal uh, inspiration um, is not about going to a restaurant or food. And um, I love museum. Um, I love interesting movies. Uh, I love to talk to people. I love to be aware about the different culture. Um, I love to travel. Um, I love to. Um, I'm still a baby. I'm still learning. So I think it's it's when I go into the world, I always get an open mind and see things that can um, uh, draw my attention and kind of like uh, spark something inside of me. Um, but it's interesting because I think you, I always go back to uh, um, a piece of my memories that has been triggered when I was a long time ago. Uh, but I think it's, it's, I think it's very important for me to be in the world and be inspired by different artists and um, even politics inspire me. That's you know, I mean, you know, making the desert, you know, the the, the honey desert was very political. So, um, um, and 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 as I say, you know, I'm, I'm we we don't look into anything perfect. So when we do something, it's not about perfection. It's really about evolution. So how do you achieve evolution? It's always to be um, in the world and always learn. Other. I'm sure that you guys do that here too. It's about evolution. Google, what good Google was a few years ago, 20 years ago? How long Google exists? I don't know. 20 years? No, 10 years? 15 years? Okay, so what Google was 15 years ago is not what Google is today, and it's, it's all about you know, evolution. So this is, uh, this is why we think, the way we think in the kitchen, so. Do you have any favorite restaurants? No. <laughs> Where? Uh, either locally or abroad, I guess. Um, so um, my favorite restaurant in the United States is uh, Blue Eel Stone Farm. Um, if you don't know anything about Dan Barber, I will recommend to just read a little bit about him and, and, and his way of cooking. It's amazing. Um, and um, San Francisco, there's a lot of great restaurants in San Francisco. Uh, where do I hang out? Uh, anywhere, Zuni Cafe. I was at Lokanda last night. Uh, but in the world, um, my, one of my favorite restaurants is Michel Bras in Langol in France. Um, I love Kike da Costa in Denia, Valencia. Um, Andonis uh, is the chef of Marguerite's in San Sebastian. 
and um, this is places that I like, but I'm, um, I'm fun to, you know, there's a lot of restaurants that I love, you know, I think I admire chefs and cooks that uh, go out there and uh, speak and, and dialogue with us with their own food and being personal, so I'm just very open. Um, and then my restaurant is pretty good. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, every, every, day, every day when I walk at Atelier, when I'm done with Atelier, I go to Petit Crane and I sit at the bar, I get a, and this is mine. And I, it's a lot, you know, and I, and I get a glass of wine, a rosé and some oyster and I feel at home and I think that's important. But there's a lot of great restaurants. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty humbling to be in a city that is, has so, so many talented people and I feel lucky to be a part of it. I think I speak for everyone when I say what an inspiration you are and what a treat it's been to spend a little time with you here this afternoon. So thank you and uh, give me a round of applause. I don't think you ever done. Uh <laughs>